Hi, everyone, the large group that we have this evening. Um, my name is Dr. Lundy. I am one of the clinical psychologists here at student, in Student Health and Counseling Services. Um, and I'm going to be talking to you this evening um, about, um, I think he can tell you. Okay, I'm going to be talking about know your e-status. Um, so, in order to get started, I want to just ask you all a quick question. And to do that, I'm going to ask you to sit back in your seat, pause on taking your notes for a second, and close your eyes. And I want you to take a deep breath in. And slowly exhale. One more time, take a deep breath in and slowly exhale. And with your eyes still closed, I want you to think of the first word that comes to mind when you think of stress. And with your eyes still closed, I want you to think of the first word that comes to mind when you think of mental health. And with your eyes still closed, I want you to think of one last thing. The first thing that comes to mind when you think of well-being. Stress, emotional, psychological health, and well-being. Three different words that come to mind when you think of those. And at the sound of my voice, take one last deep breath in and slowly exhale out. And slowly when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Okay. Um, so I asked you three different words. What was the first word that came up for you when you thought of stress? Okay, so overwhelmed is the first thing that you thought of with stress. Conflict. Conflict. Okay, what about you? School. School. <laughs> okay, so stress can be associated with relationships or conflict. Overwhelmed, meaning many tasks that we have to do, um, or feeling uh, unable to complete all the different things and then school maybe school is what's causing you to feel overwhelmed about the different tasks that you have to do okay so what happened when I ask you to think about mental health uh, stability. stability okay what else stress. stress mental health feels stressful okay and what about you what came up being in good standing with your mental health. Being in good standing mm -hmm. with your mental health. Okay. Um, I appreciate you all's responses because um, you all gave what we would consider positive reactions to mental health. Often what I hear are some negative connotations associated with mental health. So the stigma behind that, you know, if we think about your mental health or if we want to talk about it, that then maybe um, you're unstable, you're crazy, um, I got a smile out of you. Um, have, do, does that resonate with you at all in terms of what you've heard people say mm -hmm. about mental health? Mm -hmm. And yet you all gave really positive answers. So I think that actually that's great. Um, except we talked about stress and mental health, um, but Still, I didn't hear some of the negative stereotypical things that cause us to not um, know our e-status. So my title of my presentation is, do you, you know, know your e-status? Do you know? Do you know where your, your mental health or your emotional health lies? Um, so I'm not going to ask you to kind of out yourselves, but keep that in mind. Do you know how well you're doing emotionally? And we're going to talk today about why that's even important to know how well you're doing emotionally. So I'm going to start by asking you to consider this scenario. Okay. What if I could get you to read, one of you all read 
the scenario. It's 11.30 p.m. and you have a paper due tomorrow at 8 a.m. that you have been working on for two weeks. You have your own computer and have been typing away when suddenly it crashes. What do you do? Go to the library and do it over. Okay. It's well, yeah, because the library here closes at 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so go to the library. What else do we do? If you can't go to the library, you better call a friend. <laughs> Download the Google Docs app on the <laughs> Problem solve is what I hear you saying. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you feel? Stressed, Stressed overwhelmed. So you kind of... Uh, <laughs> I'll be mad first. You'd be mad yeah, first. Mad okay. First. Okay. So essentially what this says is that there is an external event that happens and it causes us to have some impact on our emotional or mental health. Um, and in order to reduce that stress feeling or being overwhelmed, we problem solve. Okay. But what if I change the scenario and say it's 1130, the paper is due at midnight. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Email the, teacher. yeah. email the teacher. So we're still problem solving. Okay. Did that change the intensity of the emotional response at all? Mm -hmm. For you, it did? It, you'd be more stressed out because you might have to work park at this point. Yeah, so you can do about it. Mm -hmm. um, WTF. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it created this sense of hopelessness maybe that there weren't alternative ways to solve the problem? Yeah. So it, it with the computer crashing, it that is something that caught you off guard. It was a shock. Um, and again, it didn't feel like there were opportunities to manage the, the problem. And so we said it could lead to stress, um, which is an emotional reaction. So let's talk about, um, I'm going to show you a short clip that defines stress further as it relates to your emotional health and talks about what happens when we don't manage it very well. So I told you that the title of the presentation was around Know Your E-Status, right? But in order to know it, you need a little bit more information around what impacts it. So let's watch this together. In a busy world with unending work and responsibilities piling up, stress can get to the best of us. But how bad is it for you, really? Can stress actually kill you? From a biological perspective, stress makes perfect sense. If you're about to get chomped on by a bear, your stress hormones better kick your butt into gear. But it turns out that your mortgage, unemployment, and looming exam all trigger the same stress response in your body. And unlike most animals, which eventually experience a major decrease in these hormones, humans can't seem to find the off switch. Even though it's not life and death, our psychological woes consistently bathe our bodies in these hormones, making our heart pound, muscles tense, and stomach turn. In Japan, they have the term koroshi, which literally translates to death from overwork. In what is now deemed an overworking epidemic, these individuals who are seemingly healthy and in their prime suddenly die. After being officially recognized and documented in Japan, these sudden heart attacks and strokes were quickly linked to stress. But how does stress cause this? Cortisol is one of the main stress hormones which helps divert energy to where you need it and away from non-essential functions of the body. But with chronic stress exposure, problems arise. The immune system shuts down, inflammation is inhibited, white blood cells are reduced, and susceptibility to disease increases. Some evidence also suggests that prolonged stress may be involved in the development of cancer. When looking at the arteries of macaque monkeys, those under significant stress have more clogged arteries. This prevents blood from getting to the heart quickly during stress and can ultimately lead to heart attacks. The brain also takes a toll. When looking at mice exposed to stress, we see dramatically smaller brain cells with fewer branch extensions than normal mice. This is particularly prevalent in the areas associated with memory and learning which may stir up some memories for you of those wonderful all-night study sessions. The acute stress and sleep deprivation can make it increasingly difficult to remember the things we want to. Perhaps the most telling story is in our DNA. 
we contain something called telomeres at the end of our chromosomes, which decrease in size with our age. Our video on aging here explains this process. Eventually, the telomeres run out, at which point the cell stops duplicating and dies. So telomeres are directly related to aging and length of life. And it turns out, stress may actually accelerate the shortening of these telomeres. But not all hope is lost for the perpetually stressed. Another hormone, oxytocin, has been shown to reduce this stress response. It helps your blood vessels relax and even regenerates the heart from stress-related damage. So how do we get more oxytocin? It's sometimes dubbed the cuddle hormone because it's released during positive social interactions and while caring for others. People who spend more time with others create a buffer or resilience to stress. So when life gets the best of you, just remember, you don't have to go it alone. Spend some time with those you love. It may just save your life. Got a burning question you want to answer? Ask it in the comments or on Facebook. Okay, so as it relates to stress and your emotional health, what did we learn or what did we hear? Stress um, can kill you. Yeah. Stress, stress can kill you. Um, funny but not funny, right? Like it, it, I think we probably have said that in joking, um, but what this illustrated is that stress actually does change the body chemistry in negative ways and in ways that we really want to pay attention to. What else did you hear? But I'm summing it up to, you know, you have those who are like clean freaks or who are like extra, extra safe so they can stay away from diseases and everything mm. when they could be really stressed out and still be prone to it. Mm -hmm. So stress is something that impacts us all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So basically, when you're in good standing with, you know, mental health, you'll mm. be all right. But if you're yeah. in good standing, you can die. That's interesting. It, it, well, I appreciate you noting that how important mental and emotional health is because when you think about um, how the things, the factors that influence your academic performance, mm -hmm. when you think about the factors that um, influence your physical health, usually mental health doesn't come up in the equation, right? We don't really talk about, um, well, if your mental health is um, in decline, or your emotional, your E status, as I said, if it's in decline, you're probably not going to class. You're probably not sleeping. Or if you're going to class and your mental health is in decline, then maybe you're not thinking as clearly as you're in the class. You're not hearing things in the same way. Um, it, we thought it really important to provide information about, around your emotional health because it directly influences your ability to be successful. And that's all of what kind of this first year University 1100 experience is about, is making sure that you set yourself up for success. And when we're not taking care of our emotional health, what, 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 what are we learning so far? If we're not taking care of our emotional health, then what? We're going to crash. You could crash. Um, and, and, and essentially, when we think about your academic performance, it definitely will, will, could, could negatively influence that. Um, but there's hope. I know. <laughs> you smile. Um, what is the hope, you say? Well, this further just kind of defines what it is. It's a normal experience that we all have. Um, the hope that I mentioned, though, it lies in us better understanding what impacts our emotional health. Um, so how do you know when you're stressed? In order to fix something, you have to know when it's there. So how do you know when you're stressed? Just kind of, I've given you some examples, but what are your personal experiences? Personally, um, that's actually pretty true. Like, I didn't want to go to class. This is my, um, I'm actually second year. Mm -hmm. the first year I was like that. I didn't want to go to class or like, I'd be there, but I wouldn't be paying attention. I'd be on my phone or I'd literally try to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. I stopped working out. I want to be in my room more. I was kind of divided, mm -hmm. separated from people. So mm -hmm. it could really take a toll on you. It mm -hmm. kind of makes you want to like quit or give up mm -hmm. on school. But when you yep. change it, it's different. So I hear you saying that it impacted, you know you're stressed when you have less interest in the mm -hmm. things that you know you, I mean, that you know you're interested in, that when you're feeling more tired, so you have these physical responses. Um, and then um, you kind of just, um, I wouldn't say that you sounded sad, but you kind of were not. Yeah, you shut shut down. That's a that is definitely an indicator that you're feeling stressed. Um, what about others of us? How do we know when we're feeling stressed? Worrying. Worrying. Yes. Okay. So you're. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So 
We know we're stressed when our thoughts turn to worry. When your sleep pattern, yep. So actually some people, what I hear him saying is that he wanted to sleep more. You said you didn't get enough sleep. So stress, um, in addition to having these mental, physical, um, and emotional, all, all of this is emotional in a sense, but um, what we find is that it impact us, impacts us differently. So I'm asking each of you, how do you know when you're stressed? Because it's important to know your personal stress triggers because they're your personal indication if your emotional health isn't in the greatest place. Because for me, um, I don't, we haven't mentioned this yet, but for me, my appetite is impacted and that's how I know I'm stressed. For me, my appetite shuts off. I have a, a friend though, her appetite, she eats a whole lot more, right? You, you kind of nodding your hair, yeah. Um, and so that means it impacts us differently, but still both indicators that we need to be paying attention to our emotional health. Any other signs that you can think of? Attitude. Attitude. <laughs> I appreciate you for your honesty. Yes, yes. Attitude, what, what happens to the attitude though? My attitude changed. Uh-huh. Right now, I'm in a rock and a hard place between having to choose. I'm a second degree student, mm -hmm. you know, been served this wonderful country five years. Decided to change my major from criminal justice to doing something, you know, physical therapy. Mm -hmm. Been trying to do the undergrad part, physics. Mm. And that's the only class that keeps these two particular physics one and two that's going to keep me either from graduating with this particular major or okay. having to switch it. Okay. So stressful scenario. Very stressful scenario. And, so it, I'm like, and it impacts your mood or your added your your temperament in yeah, what sense? Because I walk out on T A. Okay. Week. So you have less patience it sounds like. Um, you're maybe a little more irritable. I don't want to put that word on you if that's not true. Um it depends. Depends. Would it been I dropped the class the first time because of this situation. Okay. And then when you get back into the same situation, it's like mm -hmm. the same thing. It's mm -hmm. like, okay. So really going back to what I said about less patience. Yeah. Um, okay. So definitely, you know you're stressed because... You know, you, you, as I've seen earlier or heard earlier, you're a problem solver. You were telling me how you were prob problem solved that scenario of the paper. But even in this, because you're stressed, the problem solving skills kind of are, are, are limited in, in a sense because you feel like you're overwhelmed maybe with um, solving this problem and maybe not feeling the sense of hope that you can solve it. We're working on it. You're working on it? Well, and, and I told you all earlier that there are some solutions to this emotional health stress relationship. And so the fact that I hear you say you're working on it sounds great um, because that helps. Um, it's going to lead into what we talk about, um, about managing it. I think we're all convinced that we need to manage our stress. Is that fair? Okay. So we can move along from this slide. But here is kind of where we get into some of our solutions. So we're going to introduce what's called the wellness wheel. Um, as I know you all are taking great notes so that you can write your, re your reflection, um, the wellness wheel is a strategy for, manage for managing our emotional health and regulating stress by looking at eight different areas. Those eight areas are emotional well-being, environmental, financial, intellectual, occupational, physical, social, and spiritual dimensions of wellness. So we're looking at these eight areas and how they are inter interconnected. Um, and we look to improve our um, well-being in those areas. And in doing so, that results in improved emotional health and reduced stress. So, um, let's give an example of each of, of how um, stress can be impacted in each of these areas. And then what I'm gonna have you do is actually assess your own emotional status, your own e-status. So we're going to talk about each of these areas and how you how well you feel you are doing in um, getting what you need in each of those areas. Um, and then I'm going to give you a quick assessment to um, reinforce what you said, how well you felt you were doing. 
So in terms of, um, let's pick one. I'll give you each, add, I'll ask each of you to decide which area do you think um, you wanna ask me about and, and we'll all take a look at how well we're doing in that area. Spiritual. Spiritual, okay. Social. Spiritual, social, and emotional, okay. <laughs> so if we look at our spiritual um, well-being and how that relates to our emotional status and to our overall sense of well-being, um, religious coping is something that can come up. So spiritual, spiritual coping. And so what happens is when people are stressed or their emotional state is not in the best place, um, they can utilize um, their God source, their spiritual source as a way of providing support. Um, a way of, of influencing hope, and I mentioned that earlier. Um, and the more that they do that, the, the more they feel supported and then the less stressed they can feel. Um, your hope is or your idea would be that you are, are um, touching each of these eight areas. And um, if you are not doing well in an area, that gives you uh, a strategy to reduce your stress. So let's say you know that you have a strong spiritual sense and you find that your stomach's, uh, well, let's say, let's go with what, like you find that you're being more irritable, okay? And you know that you're doing okay occupationally, you're doing all you can there. Um, you're working out a couple of times a week. We're gonna, I'm just gonna give it to you. Yeah, you're working out a couple of times a week. You're hanging with a friend um, and you still are stressed. But you realize that, you know, your faith is something that had been important to you, but you, ha you haven't been tapping into your faith in whatever way you typically tap into your faith. That is an emotional and um, an overall well-being strategy that you can use. You identify, hey, huh, I feel like I've done all I can, but actually I haven't tapped into my spiritual well-being. So let me do that. And that can provide some support for you um, in a way that you, may, you might not have been utilizing and it can reduce your stress level and improve your overall sense of well-being. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So let's pick another area that um, we talked about. You all said, what do we say? Social. social. Okay, huh. that's a tricky one sometimes because social can be used as an avoidant strategy. So we could be needing to do our homework and everything and then we use too, we have too much social time or what can happen when we're not in a great emotional place is we have, we isolate. Did you say isolation earlier? Or kind of pull away, shut down? Yeah, so if you know, if you find yourself um, exhibiting symptoms of over being, being stressed or not in a great emotional space, and you say, hey, I realize I haven't interacted with my friends in the past two weeks, or I've had less conversations with them, what might you do? What could you do based on? Hmm. My friend did that to me, so I started to be petty. And oh. I responded to her. And you didn't respond, and you knew she they were stressed? No, it was, um, well, it was it was wild things. So I just decided, you know, because when you do respond to someone, you try to, you know, interact. Mm -hmm. You know, since we stay states apart. Yeah. So I hear from mommy, you know, when you don't respond to people, I just, okay. Okay. So then in that sense, um, they weren't getting the social interaction and you kind of pulled that away. Um, yeah, I mean, if you don't respond that, I can't really do much. So I, when you do respond, I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. Um, that is a way to approach it. And, and, if, and, and I think that definitely um, – what I would say is, is that your normal way of being. So all of this, the indicator for when you're not in a good space is if you're acting in ways that aren't typically your normal response. So if you are typically the friend that says, hey, I need you to be supportive of me or to reach out to me or to communicate with me if I'm communicating with you. But if that's not your typical response, if you normally are more patient with your friends and you normally don't pull away from them, then that's what we would encourage you to say, okay, maybe I do want to reach out more or maybe I do want to provide support more if that's not your normal way of being. Well what happened is um it took my best friend she came to visit me the first time when I moved up it was two years ago. 
And then within that first year, um, the other friend, Nikki, she was staying in Florida. She, they came up with me for the, um, for the homecoming. But since then, after that first year, the first time she came back was last year. Mm -hmm. And that was two years later. Mm -hmm. So you had some I say feelings of, of, of mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. you. So what that? I visited, I, every time I come to that area, hey, what you doing? Uh, mm -hmm. Tell you we mm -hmm. So what I hear you saying is you tried to engage socially. Right, and I tried to engage. Mm -hmm. And when she did come up here for uh, a couple hours, I let her know. I said, just let you know, I was upset with you. And I told her. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when your friend, we, was, um, she, we spent time, what got it was, we went to New York City to go visit a, a friend, a boyfriend or something. Mm -hmm. And for the past, for the two weeks prior, it was a lot of disagreement going on. Mm -hmm. And I got irritated. Okay. And I mean, you know, like I told her, I said, you know, he's not the only one that's taking off of work. Yeah. I'm taking off to support you. So what I'm hearing is that in this instance, maybe trying to utilize your social support or increasing in that area, it didn't provide you with the no, I just what you like needed. It was just all about him, and I'm like, mm -hmm. the question is, does he really? Is mm -hmm. he really all about you? So what? So what do you all? What do you all think? I want to make sure we're all engaged. No, I appreciate you what you're sharing. I'm saying, what do you all think? I'm asking them to in, to provide some support to you, maybe around your situation, and I can provide some feedback. Um, what I'm hearing though is maybe the social support that she needed, and that if we wanted to increase, maybe we needing to find new social supports, different social supports. Just because that particular social support didn't work doesn't necessarily mean that would kind of be the same as saying. Um, I lost my job, which is a stressful thing, right? So I'm just not going to ever work again. Like, well, no, we're going to get another job. We're going to find another job because that is a part of our overall well-being that we need. Um, so I would encourage you to, to know, one, that we acknowledge that when friends aren't being good friends, that that doesn't, that that actually causes more conflict, remembering what you said earlier. Um... But that doesn't mean that getting social support isn't a great or a positive thing. I call my, you know, my parents, of course, and I call my cousin Sophia, who stays all the way in Alaska. Okay. So you've identified alternative people. But, you know, I try to, and I also have a line of work on my attitude because I know things come off the harsh. I think being self-reflective is a really important piece, and that's really all I'm, I'm encouraging each of us to do, right? To know what's going on for you, know your attitude, and you can't address any issue, whether it's your emotional well-being or any other area, if you're not aware of what's going on, okay? Thank you. What's your name again? Antoinette. Antoinette. Thank you, Antoinette, for being so vulnerable. I know we're in here with us. Yeah, we're in here with a small group, and it takes a lot to kind of really be open. And we're talking about an issue, again, that we don't ever really talk about. And so whatever is said in here, um, we will honor what you're saying. And anybody who's watching this video, we will honor what she shared and how thoughtful she was in sharing that. Um, so I told you I was going to let you do a screening to kind of see where you are. So... Since I already see our smartphones out, we're on our smartphones. Let's just take our smartphones out and let's go. What did you say? You put yours down. Oh, it didn't die. Okay. So, okay. So we're going to go to screening. dot mental health screening let's hope that that's right so I'm going to read it to you yeah so screening dot mental health screening dot org slash nccu Once you're there, let me know. Click on take a screen. Absolutely, that is what we're going to do. So let me come around and make sure. Okay, yes. So 
So once you've gotten to that page, you click on take a screening. Okay. And what I'm going to give you the option of doing, um, we've talked about um, stress in general, which is related to any of the screenings um, that are there. But first, let me just tell you which screenings are available. So you have a depression screening. Um, you have a bipolar uh, screening, which is another mood concern. Um, you have an anxiety screening. You have um, a screening around just general mood. And then you have substance use, eating disorders, post-traumatic stress, and again, another substance use screening. So what I'm gonna give you the opportunity to do is just to kind of see where your e-status is in whichever area you decide, okay? Um, these screenings are confidential. Um, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to do that now. And then after you've had a chance to do that, it should only take a few minutes. Um, you're gonna get some quick results that let you know where your standing is and how you're doing. Um, and then after that, I'm going to let you know about um, what you get in terms of an incentive for having taken this screening and knowing your e-status. So I'll let you take a few minutes and let me know when you're done. All done? Okay. So we're going to give them all done? Okay. We'll just wait. Then I'm going to get some reactions and then I'm going to provide you with a little bit more information. Your phone made it through. It didn't die. Yay. All done? Okay. Oh, I was waiting. I wasn't sure. Okay. So, what was that like? Well, kind of share. You don't have to let us know which screening you took, but um, what did you find in terms of your status of emotional well being in that particular area? Was it better or worse, the same than you thought? Okay. Um, so no surprises for anybody, okay? Um, what I will say is that some students or some of the, if you, if you are to take, because I'm going to encourage you to take two of the other screenings, if you are to take the two other screenings, um, that it may indicate that you need to get further support. If it did indicate that, um, where are some areas on campus that you can get some support around your e-status or emotional health? Human resources. Human resources? Okay. Well, how, how so about human resources? Mm -hmm. So, do you all remember where I told you about? The very first thing I told you is where I work, what office I work in. I don't remember that part. Ah. Your face. So, now I got that mm. so, my name is Dr. Lundy. I'm one of the clinical psychologists that works in student health and counseling services. So, all day I see students who need support. So I'm a psychologist. That means um, I provide individual counseling uh, as well as lead group counseling for individuals who are in distress. So does anybody know where the student health building is? Is that the one in front of Subway? It's the one in front of Subway. Okay. Counseling services is located on the second floor of that building. Okay. So centrally, um, 
we are the go-to people. Now, in terms of human resources, if you are a staff member here, any staff member is eligible for counseling services as a part of their employment here. But as a student, a part of your student health fee um, provides you with the opportunity to utilize our services at no additional cost to you. Okay, and actually that's one of the few times that'll happen in life because outside of this space, mental health services can be very expensive. Okay. Um, so unlike when you see health services and you have to pay, there is an additional cost to some of the services you receive, you don't have to incur any additional costs in our offices. Okay. Where else, though, could you go get some support? Chaplain. Yep. So the Office of Spiritual Engagement and Dialogue is a place. Mm -hmm. So that's that. So what part? Let's go back. What? So essentially... The areas on campus where you can get some emotional support are some, check on your e-status, are going to be one of those eight areas on here. So where on campus can you work on your physical self? Okay. Yep, Campus Rec. They offer uh, yoga classes, Zumba classes, they have the weights, the treadmills, all of that. You can work on your physical self, which I've shared with you earlier, helps with your emotional, your e-status. Stress reliever, absolutely. So pick another area and let's find where you're on campus where you can deal with that. Which one? Um, any, any one of them. So we already, you gave us spiritual, right? That's going to be campus, campus ministries or spiritual engagement and dialogue. Well, pick another area. Social. Social, where do you think you could go? Student union, yep. So does anybody have relationship with the staff members there in, in student union? No. Okay. Well, those staff members there provide um, support. They do informal counseling. You wouldn't be going for formal counseling, but they definitely provide mentorship to some of the students. So student leadership and student engagement and leadership are, is the name of that area that works out of the student union. What about, you got financial stress. Where you go? And that, yep, I've had, yes, that's where you can go to get some additional support. I hope that we find that as a helpful place. Sometimes it can maybe feel more stressful to go to financial aid, um, but that they have scholarship opportunities if you're having financial concerns. They have information around how you can waive application fees. Um, so definitely a place to go. Pick one more place. Um, which one do we do? Occupational. Ah, now that's a good one. Now, where would you go to get some support there? Mm. Mm. Because I've been going through that for the past four months, been dealing with that particular stress on top of. Mm -hmm. else. So this is going to be good when we when we give you this answer. This is going to be helpful. Hopefully. <laughs> yes, I I do hope. Where else? Come think about it. Oh, like career advisor. <laughs> um. <laughs> you rock. I know I went to, um, I went to the Men's Achievement Center once. Mm. I talked to some of them. Yep. About, uh, career advising. Yeah. And, because yeah. several of the coordinators in that office um, have not mental health as well as, well as career um, counseling experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So essentially there's lots of places on campus where you can get, but de career services is the first place I think about in terms of occupational. Mm -hmm. um, but even the work study, um, yeah. You can get work study on it's campus. Good it's good. It's good experience. And in terms of sometimes students have the stress of not having a car or, mm -hmm. um, you know, finding employment that's going to work with their academic schedule. If you get work study, they're going to work with your classes. Yeah, it's convenient. It's convenient. Because I've done VA work study recently. Our VA representative, our VA program coordinator, mm -hmm. resigned in the middle of the semester. Okay. That was the work study. So it wasn't a good placement for you? Um, she, because I've been doing it for quite some time, so I understood the ropes, but mm -hmm. just the fact that the way it failed. Got it. And it failed on my shoulders in a sense. It was a lot. It was overwhelming. Yeah. And so essentially what we want to do with any of these areas, we want to find the best fit. So I'm going to say that if you came to our office, so emotional is where kind of on the wellness wheel where um, he, I love it. Yes. Healing. Yes. Um, 
if you came to student health and counseling services or counseling services and you say you walked in, I'm using myself as an example, say you walked in, you sat down with me, I did an initial assessment and you hated sitting with me. You were like, this lady is <laughs> annoying. I don't like her voice, whatever. Um, or she talks over me when I'm trying to tell her what my problems are. If it's not a good fit, we have other counselors. If that work study experience was not a good fit, there are other opportunities. My concern is that what happens with some of these areas of wellness, we're trying to support ourselves and we get frustrated and we're like, oh, well, it didn't work. That, that person or that solution didn't work, so I'm not gonna, so it doesn't help, it doesn't work. So, so really my encouragement in terms of your emotional health and reducing stress is to keep trying, to keep going. There are other ways, I'm sorry, go ahead. Do you? Do, do I? I go to school while they tell me they're probably. I want to be able, if in the event that I come to you, I want yes. to be able to trust you. I want to be able to know that you're going to listen to my issues, even if it takes two hours. I absolutely listen to my students when they come and talk to me. It is a safe space. I appreciate you saying that. It is a place where you can talk about absolutely anything. And confidentiality is a very important component of what we do in our work. There are very few limitations to me not being able to maintain that confidentiality. And if I break it, it's only in instances where I feel like your safety is a concern or if safety you is a concern. You're kill someone or someone possibly might kill you and you say that, that's the mm -hmm. only time where it can be broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've actually talked to someone when I was in the military. I actually had a person I was going to. Okay. And so I moved. Okay. So yeah, since then. So it could be, I mean, I'm not going to just say this specifically to you, but I'll give it to any of you that um, our office is located on what floor of what building across from what building? Second floor. Second floor. Subway. Subway of the what building? This Student this Health this Building. Place. You all are awesome. What's the office hours? Um, so every day you can walk into the counseling center from 8 to 5. You don't need an appointment. Um, we will try to get you in that day if we have some availability. If not, in, if not, we'll get you on as soon as we can. Um, but if you're in, in crisis, you'll be seen that day. So um, my particular office hours, I'm there every day from eight to five. Mm -hmm. um, but I have walk-in hours. Each of each counselor has a different walk-in day. So I have walk-in hours on. If I tell the world this, I don't can't my, my walk-in hours can't be <laughs> inundated, but my walk-in hours are on Friday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but every we have great counselors in the counseling center. And they listen to you, will not try their best not to talk over you. Okay. That's an important piece. I appreciate you really asking that question, honestly. I'm joking, but I appreciate it. I will that. come to you. I want to come to you. I want to talk to you. Talk to you. To you. <laughs> well, we might not. We might know that the, you don't know if those other people might provide you with some similar support. That my colleagues really are pretty awesome. They're pretty dope. And I'm thinking about this transcript that's going to happen, and <laughs> somebody is going to have to say they're pretty dope. That is interesting. So, um, so with those screenings, I don't know what came up for each of you. But if it said that you want to get some additional support, we've identified air areas on campus where you can get that support. Uh, and if our office is one of those, please feel free. Don't hesitate to walk in. Uh, and tomorrow we're open again, 8 to 5. Um, let's see if there's an, I think there's one other slide. I have a question. Are you going to be cold with Queen on? I'm not, but I know who is on the one on wellness. Yep. So Dr. Ruth Phillips, she is the executive director of student health and counseling services. She will be doing the colloquium on wellness. Okay. Okay. So this at the being Duke? Nope. All of them are now are going to be here. Mm -hmm. So there was one today, actually, on diversity. You missed that one? Is that was at 1040? It was at 11. Yeah. Or 11, excuse me. It was whatever time your class is. So what time is your class? Oh, it was online. So I guess 1040 Okay. Okay, so actually then the next time it'll be one at eight, 11, and four, the one on wellness. And that's a good, good talk to come to. As that one's on February the 22nd. How to wait, the COVID one should have been something like that, I think. So the, 
tonight, this has been the Eagle Talons. The colloquium was earlier today. So it's earlier today at what time? It was at whatever time the class was. And so it sounds like you said yours is online. Um, so I think you could have gone to any of those, the 8, the 11, or the 4 o'clock. So before I let you go, I told you, so I need two things. One, I'm going to have to get your 820 number so that we can give you credit for your attendance. And um, the second thing is I told you there were some incentives, right, about taking that screening. Um, so if you take two additional screenings that were on that page and you're able to take a screenshot with your phone indicating that you completed the screening and bring that in to student health, we will give you a t-shirt. <laughs> Oh, take a screenshot now. <laughs> got two. You got to do two other screenings, though. Two other ones. Mm -hmm. So you did the first one. I kind of gave you the head start, right? But do two of the other seven on that page. You do two other screenings. Take a screenshot of the the page that says, "Hey, I finished," mm -hmm. and then bring that in to my or our area, which is second floor, student health building, across from Subway. Yep and we will give you a t-shirt. Okay. Yep, so it's an easy way it's to get, NCCU. it says NCCU. Hey. Yes. Um, <laughs> right, that's the outfit you don't have to worry about one day. Um, okay, so now let's do, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for being engaged. And so now let's get 820 numbers and then we can get out of here, okay?